Okay, this is day 98, and this is part three. Um, since the first day that Stroke's name popped up, I said it was a shared Dropbox, and the reason I did was the Hillary Huma uh, situation with 650,000 emails, just by the sheer number of emails, I had said it was a shared Dropbox. It later was confirmed by the actual testimony of Jim Comey. Um, I had said the Yuan spy ring was a shared Dropbox because Debbie Wasserman Schultz had said she would use the Dropbox hooker by crook, and Imran had the 123 at mail.house.gov. So I just figured, hey, the common thread here in, in, in network analysis, if you understand the network topology, troubleshooting becomes very easy. And if you start with the idea that the Awans had the CIA car dealership, they had the CIA mosque for money laundering, and I didn't name it Cars International A, they did, um, and you trace Andy McKay back to John Brennan, it becomes very simple. John Brennan would use burner phones uh, that are special, you know, it, Anthony's trusted staff phones. These are great phones for uh, cryptography, sort of a Tanay Taggart type level encryption, uh, but they're special in the sense that no one knows how to get into them. Nobody knows the back doors into them. NSA doesn't know the back doors. These are safe phones to conduct business on, okay? Wouldn't that be the type of phones that, that Page and Strokes would use? So what I had said was even if the DOJ just published, now there's four phones supposedly the DOJ has seized. If the, We know two of them are Samsung, but if the DOJ would just publish the make and model of the other two phones, that'd be great metadata. You'd be able to see if those indeed are BlackBerry phones. You'd be able to link all this stuff together. I have followed this whole uh, encryption with the BlackBerry phones over and over and over and I've seen how the alphabet, I'm not going to say CIA, I'm going to say alphabet continually uses these phones because they've you know kind of infiltrated DEA and ATF as well. So alphabet's just the whole crew, JTTF, you throw all the letters together, it's alphabet. They use these gangs for security, they use these phones in, in, in separated compartmentalized access programs or separate uh, specialized access programs. So that's the, the modus operandi. So just publish the phones and we'll, we'll learn. So then I look at things like where is the down blending actually occurring? And if you don't remember, the down blending uh, is the Russian uranium coming into the United States and now we're drilling, drilling down one more level. It was supposed to be in a place called Irwin, Tennessee, right? But then it turns out to be a place called Irwin, New Mexico. Ah, that's interesting. Irwin must be somebody's name. It must be the Americanized version of Imran. But then, you know, identifying experts is one of the things that I love to do because I love to go visit them and then take the working theory that I have and bounce it off them because this guy is, is an expert, this Arjun, okay? So basically the proposal was, you know, and I've said this is, I call it, uranium not uranium one but uranium backfill basically let's sell all the HEU to the Navy customers first and then we'll backfill with depleted uranium that we can reprocess so this is what that we're talking about here is is he's commenting this Arjun uh, we'll just call it Mac Arjun Mac is, is commenting about the all the intricacies of the depleted depleted uranium reprocessing and again if I show up at your nuclear power plant with fuel that meets the level then we're good to go now he confirms what I've said before in my series that DU is about three times more radioactive per unit um, and over the transuranic waste threshold and so forth And he talks about all the risks and so forth but it just seems like it just seems like that the Podesta group or whoever would be processing this Urenko in this case would be shopping basically for states where they could get the proposal through. So if I take DU from other countries, I bring it in South Carolina, for instance, like I had mentioned before, Charleston, I truck it over to Tennessee, which I think was the original plan. I could reprocess it with this high power laser, and then away we go. Um, I can resell it rather than having to use highly enriched uranium this valuable, you know, this, these gold bars, I wouldn't be using these gold bars. I'd be basically taking lead and turning it into silver. Uh, and then I would just replace, um, in, instead of using gold bars and, 
and and melting them down into silver, I would just re use lead to replace uh, with with these silver bars. If that makes sense, I would I would use waste uranium to make low enriched uranium rather than using highly enriched uranium to make low enriched uranium. It doesn't make any sense.